This Hello. Welcome to the ILS community panel discussion on religion and belief. Thank you for joining us and taking your time and teaching us about your beliefs. Without further ado, let's begin. Thank you for supporting and helping our religious studies. And please, panelists, if you could, tell us, introduce yourselves and tell us what beliefs you subscribe to. And then if you could, please give us a brief remark on your religion and how you came to it. Hi, my name is Jeff Daly. I'm uh, Senora Daly's husband, Luna Daly's dad. Um, I am an atheist, um, meaning I don't believe in God. And um, I came to that belief, I, I grew up in a Jewish household actually, and um, had a bar mitzvah and went to synagogue. And, um, it wasn't until I went off to college that, luck luckily enough for me and my happiness, my roommate in college was an atheist and we, we used to just sit up all night and talk about these ideas. And uh, slowly but surely, um, I decided that I didn't believe in God anymore. So, and then I met Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> so, hola, I'm Marcel Adeli. Jeff's wife, known as mom. Um, so I'm also an atheist. I never knew what an atheist was until I started researching for this panel. I consider myself without any religion or belief in God or extreme force that controls our lives or regulates the way we behave. I was never exposed to any religion, even I lived almost my whole life in a Catholic and Christian country. My parents never had any symbols or any talks about religion around us. So I just grew up without any symbols of religion or beliefs in external forces. Hello, um, I am Mr. JR, but for our panel, I'll be um, Mr. JR Devilon, and I am an evangelical Christian. My dad's dad is a pastor, and Christianity is actually part of the story of how my whole family was even able to come to this country. So um, that's a story for another day. But um, as for me, um, my dad in raising me and my sister, um, with my mom of course, um, we, we were sort of in and out of the church. Um, it can be very hard sometimes for um, children, pastors and families in that way to kind of grapple with and deal with um, religion in those ways. So that's what my dad was doing as well, um, largely in large part. And um, we're also, in, I grew up in a military family. So my dad was in the Air Force, we moved around a lot. So for as that affected, how that affected me, it was kind of like nothing was really stable. Nothing was really able to actually take hold in my life in a lot of ways. I remember at the age of about 10, having a bit of an existential crisis. And I just remember having these huge nightmares every night, saying, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to just not exist anymore. That was like the earliest memory I have that, of something like beyond me or having a desire outside of myself in that way. And um, in part with being participating in um, Christian activities through um, childhood and through um, adolescence and through um, um, the teenage years as well. Um, there were certain experiences I had along the way and what really sort of nailed things down for me was um, in college was that um, there was a church um, which I um, still currently attend. I've been attending for 16 years and I was invited to be a part of the community. Uh, most of my attempts to try to answer things was kind of on my own, but it's when that experience in the community with others who were um, believing in a particular way that that helped answer um, important questions that I had. And that's how I continue to live to this day. Hello, you probably know me as Cindy Rosera, but for the panel I'll be Sarah Kunia Law, and I'm Jewish. I grew up Jewish. And um, as a child, um, I went to a conservative synagogue. Um, there are many different branches of Judaism, just like in many faiths, you'll, you'll learn that there's, there's different um, sects or branches or um, 
differences in beliefs. Um, so the, 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 the branch that I grew up with, with is called conservative. And um, I now, I do attend a conservative synagogue now, but I consider myself to be reconstructionist which means, um, which is something we could get into if you're, if you're more interested <laughs> into it, but um, it, the, the short way of people often describe Reconstructionist Judaism is that uh, tradition has a vote but not a veto. So it's a very, um, it, it, it's more of an interpretive um, version. And um, I do keep kosher and I observe Shabbat, um, and um, that, uh, the Hi, I'm Carolyn Choate, I'm Brad's wife, and I'm a Hindu. Um, I grew up in an organization that used Hindu philosophy, um, so I have a lot of background and familiarity with it when I realized in my mid-twenties that that was really what my beliefs were, because um, it had never been labeled that way. So once I started exploring in college, like what, what do I believe, then I looked at all those things and said, oh, I'm already a Hindu. I've always been a Hindu. But my parents didn't give me that language to express it. So I've been Hindu ever since. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Brad, but I guess for the panel, I'm Brad Cho. Um, I am both Buddhist and Taoist. I'd say on a good day I'm Taoist, and on a bad day I'm Buddhist. We can get into that later. Um, they are both uh, religions. Taoism is from China, Buddhism is from India, um, and let's see. They're both religions where the primary thing about them is not what you believe. You can believe a lot of things and be a Taoist or be a Buddhist, but what really matters is your practice, your meditation practice and your moral practice. And so I am both because I practice Taoist meditation and Buddhist meditation. I practice self-cultivation and I practice the Eightfold Path. Um, I became Taoist uh, when I was 16. I was going to St. Paul's up the hill and uh, there was a mandatory religion class that I was not particularly interested in, but it was mandatory, so I took it. The first half of the year was um, not religions of the book. So every, they tried to get every religion that wasn't uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in half the year. And that was my first exposure to Taoism. And the ideas therein so much were what I already believed that I said, oh, I'm Taoist. And that was that, and that hasn't changed really since. Um, I added Buddhism because when I graduated from St. Paul's, they had a, a senior project, and I decided that I wanted to learn more about meditation, and the only place that I found that would teach me meditation in a very fast and intense way was the International Meditation Center, which is in Northern Maryland. And I spent 10 days as a senior in high school, the 10 days before prom, um, meditating and being vegetarian. And uh, I would I'd meditate for eight and a half hours a day. Uh, so it was, it was intense. And during that time, they would also tell me stories about Buddhism, about the Buddha, and about his disciples. And the thing with Buddhism that I found is that it's not wrong. Uh, I mean, that's Taoism is, is about nature and going with the flow. Buddhism is very well logically structured. The basic belief is that there is suffering. Suffering has a cause. You can end suffering, and the end of suffering is the Eightfold Path. And they lay it out logically all the way through, and I've not once found a fault with Buddhist logic. So, I'm both.
So when I was at the meditation center, um, they cooked for me, and they also provided me with a clean space to live and, you know, like bathrooms and stuff. Um, and I didn't have to worry about anything other than meditating. So, yes, it did eat into the rest of my life because I gave up everything for 10 days to go meditate like that. But I didn't have to do anything other than meditate. And I didn't do it eight and a half hours, like, in a row. I did, you know, an hour here, an hour and a half, two hours. And it all added up to about eight and a half hours a day. Um, 
my major in college was religious studies. Uh, so while I was definitely being judged by another person, it didn't really affect my beliefs ultimately. Though I did take a minute to really think about why I believe the things that I believe and still believe. Um, but I believe them because I really think they're true, not because they're cool. They are cool, though. <laughs> similar I think to my answer. I've certainly had that um, a lot being not Indian and Hindu because they usually go together. So some misunderstanding about uh, the possibility of non-Indians being Hindu. Um, but I don't know, it's pretty rare. I can't really think of any particular time. I can think of several times I that happened well. on your blog. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I read blog about my experiences because unique journey. So I have um, a few thousand people that read about my religious beliefs and thoughts and practices. Um, so yeah, sometimes people, you know, over the internet, they don't really know who I am. They, they have their own sort of uh, vision of who they think that they're talking about. So it leads to some really interesting discussions. Uh, I've, I've been judged many, many times. Um, you've probably heard the word anti-Semitism. Um, I've only experienced that peripherally. Uh, but when, when I was about your age, um, my religious practice was a lot... I, I used a lot more symbols in my religious life. Um, I started wearing something called a um, talit katan, which is a religious garment. And many people wear the talit during prayer service, and I still do wear the talit during prayer service. But there's a small, a small version that you can wear under your clothes, and a little bit of it um, hangs out. It's called tzitzit, and it's um, a, um, some so, um, strings that are wrapped and tied in knots that are, are meaningful and um, have, have certain, certain um, like allusions to the commandments and many other things. Uh, and I also started wearing a kippah, um, which you, um, you, you, you probably have, have seen like the image of like a classic Jewish person and it's a, like you, probably an older guy with curls on, on, on next to his beard and a, and a black skull cap. The black skull cap is a kippah. It doesn't need to be black. And um, in, my, in my practice of Judaism, I've always been egalitarian, which means that men and women have the same responsibilities. But in some forms of Judaism, that's uh, not considered acceptable. And it's only the men who wear the talit. It's only the men who wear kippah. It's the only, only the men who read from the Torah. It's only the men who um, can be rabbis. It's only that it's all men. Um, and I didn't come from that background, but neither did my, what was my background, one that most people wore um, tzitzit or kippah in their everyday life. And I remember vividly um, being in seventh grade and uh, one of the kids in my class to cut, cut a piece of paper in a circle and glued it to the back of his head. And, uh, and that was, and, and then mocked me. And, um, and I, and I also remember other Jewish kids in my class uh, saying, like, look, just, you know, just don't, you know, just don't do that. Um, you know, why, can't, why isn't it enough for you just to wear a Star of David, which, which is my current practice. And I don't believe, I, I didn't get there through harassment. I, I wore, I wore ki a kippah into college, and then I, I wore a hat instead. And then when I found that it wasn't, making my life feel more meaningful, I, I, stopped the, I stopped the practice. And, um, yeah, um, so, and, and, and sometimes, so sometimes the biggest people who have judged me are other Jewish <coughs> people who, want, who see the faith in a different way. And I had a particularly interesting experience at the Western Wall that I could go after everybody else is having. I'm going to take a little bit of a different 
kind of slice to your question because I think um, there are different ways you can take the idea of judgment. And um, just this is what sort of came to my mind in some ways. So um, one of the things I'll, I'll borrow from Sarah too is that um, especially in, in this country and its history, there can be a already um, considered understanding of what Christianity is or what it entails. Um, the angle I want to take is that in terms of judgment is with regards to culture as um, a black male in this country and uh, who's also um, claiming to be a Christian as well too. And what that has led to has been interesting discussions within my own family um, because there's been this understanding of um, of a sort of legacy in some ways of um, the way that my dad's dad um, was able to come to the country was off of a visa that was um, offered for pastors. Um, and so that was part of how he was able to um, come to, to this country. So there's been an understanding of, oh, well, we're grateful to be able to um, have a Christian legacy or what have you within the family. However, um, what has that meant, what that has meant in terms of living as a Christian too has differed um, widely within my family. And I've had some very serious, very intense discussions about, well, you're taking this too seriously. Or that looks like that works for you, but that isn't what works for me. And which are you first? Are you Christian first or are you black first? So all of which you can imagine would be very interesting discussions to have, regardless within family, outside of family, what happened too. Um, and it's questions that you know I've um, answered or defined for myself in particular ways um, that the rest of my family isn't always I'm happy with. Um, so that has made things, you know, in some ways, you know, there are things that we all have to figure out about who we are and identity in those ways. And um, there are just things that you just aren't ever going to forget to as well. So um, the judgment, you know, I guess is kind of gone from externally, it's a little bit internally in this way too. Um, it's, um, there, there are important questions to be able to answer in that way. And um, it's just part of this. Goodbye. I don't think I feel I have felt myself judged for not believing or not following my friends and other members of my family beliefs. I think my parents were wise enough to teach us that we are humans and as humans we deserve respect for each other and give and receive respect or what you, who you are and what you believe. So I never got engaged like in religious conversation. It's just, this is pretty much the first time in my life that I'm confronted to think deeply about it. For me, it just simply didn't exist. It was a part of me. So, so if they judge me, I was not aware of that. Because I never paid attention to their expressions. Yeah, I never... Um never felt judged and maybe that's a function of the time in my life where I kind of changed my viewpoint. Um, you know, maybe when you're younger and um, you're just in so many more social situations, um, you can kind of feel that or experience that a little bit more. So it's not something that I ever experienced. For those of you who have mentioned, I have a
And so while we practice in very different ways, uh, I think... Our beliefs are only different in language, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we want to get really easy. wrapped around the axle on like philosophical things, there are some differences, but the basics are, are the same. Yeah, and we do. We, we, we talk about it, we debate, we talk about the history, which came first. <laughs> Buddhism actually grew out of Hinduism. The Buddha himself was a Hindu, uh, and he kind of reformed it um, from what it was at that time. So it's similar to Christianity growing out of Judaism, where they're very different religions now, but they had a common source point. But the funny thing about Advaita is but Advaita it grew out of Buddhism. <laughs> That's not true. Yes, yes, it, no. it oh, definitely yeah. historically. So, you don't reconcile it, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel so grateful to come from an extremely loving and welcoming family. Uh, it started from the get-go. My, my father grew up Catholic, uh, and like a very traditional Catholic family. Uh, I have seven aunts and uncles on that side because birth control was forbidden in the Catholic faith. And um, so my father's one of eight. And, um, but what I like to laugh about is that of these, these eight, eight children from the, the Prunier family, there are six Jewish grandchildren, and I only have three siblings. So, so another, um, another one of my father's sisters um, married to Jewish and converted to Judaism. So, um, and my grandmother is always on that side, loved me to bits and pieces, loved all of us. She came to my bar mitzvah. Um, she, all that stuff, and there are members of my family who I would probably consider ethical humanists, um, or you know, the religion is Judaism, but the pra practice is, um, but the belief is atheism. You don't have to be um, believe anything to be Jewish. It is about your, it is about one's practice. Um, in fact, you don't have to do anything at all. According to some people, they say if you were born Jewish, you're Jewish. That's it, um, and that's. That's our question. So, I'm so grateful that we're, we all just love each other and care about each other and believe that the important thing is to treat other people well as you would wish to be treated. All right, continuing down the line. Um, one of these, all right, quick French lesson. So, one of the um, ways if you're in France or a Francophone country that you're talking about your belief, there's two words you could say. You're, you can be pratiquant or croyant, which is kind of sounding like a little bit like an English would say. It's something that you're practicing, maybe that you're saying that you do, um, or that's something that you believe or have you to, um, or so I'm getting backwards. Practical means it's something that you're like, you know, say every week you're doing something that it's like fundamental, like you're actively, like this is something that's everywhere, everything. Or croyant, which is saying, you know, I believe, you know, but maybe it's not necessarily that it's like a service will have you to every week as well too. So I mention that because um, in terms of um, my relationship with my family and um, those areas too, um, that's where I see first like myself, I see myself as practical. It's something, um, my beliefs in Christianity and in those ways is something that affects everything that I do. And it's, that's at least um, how I see for myself. In terms of interaction like with others, and I'm thinking like in my family in particular, um, I'm a sort of grassroots sort of person. I have to go from the bottom up. So no matter what else, whatever you're saying you're believing, what are we going to do when I see you right in front of me right now? What am I, how am I going to act? What, what is what I'm saying I believe is going to affect our interaction? And I have to grow from there. So sometimes, so even being able to sit here and talk a little bit top down, I get a little bit, but um, at the end of the day, we are in the flesh human beings, and we are going to interact with each other in some way. We're going to have to make a choice at every moment about what we're going to do. And from there, should the question arise where your beliefs go and that sort of thing, fantastic. If the discussion doesn't go that way, so be it. Maybe it'll approach from another angle. But in that way, um, for me, a difference of belief does not necessarily put up a wall or impede. 
what can help is being able to interact and say good morning in the morning and in those ways. So um, that's how I guess my sort of philosophy in terms of interacting with others and with interacting um, for other um, beliefs sort of stems from is that no matter where we are, we're still here <laughs> and um, we're going to have to do something together and that'd be something awesome. Well, um, I think I I'll sort of leave it before, but regarding like just let's say just family or my other relatives. So from my side of the family, I've never been questioned. My parents have ne never been questioned or put to a, why don't you do this? Why no? Like there's always respect for beliefs. On Jeff's side of the family, when Jeff mentioned that he knew me and that we were getting married, uh, they said, "Well, but she's not Jewish." Then, but you know what? She's pretty. So that was it. And since that day, I am in. <laughs> so I think that was the only judgment and the only acceptance. And the jeans are good, and Luna is good. So, <laughs> so everything goes well. Yeah. In, in my case, any um, like silent reconciliation that had to take place because there wasn't really any sort of major friction. Um, I just continue maintaining being a good person. I was a good person um, growing up and uh, very polite and grateful and appreciative. And um, I think that just continued. My moral code kind of changed from maybe being faith-based to uh, just more reason and logic. And, um, you know, so if I, you know, I treat people the way I want to be treated and if I do something good, generally good things are going to happen. And that's just because it's it's reasonable. It's, you know, if you lie, um, if you lie to somebody, there's natural consequences of that. It's not because of there's any sort of external force that plays out the consequences. So, anyway, I continue just being a good person, um, even though my moral code kind of shifted. And um, yeah, I, I continue to bring. You know, I married outside of the religion. I, um, the things that I was doing in my life were unique. I, was, I met a girl from a foreign country, and, um, but when you meet Marcella, and, and it's, it, it, was, it was a lot more, it was her personality, and she's, my parents saw how happy I was, and she was, and um, it was just kind of a natural appreciation, I guess, for our happiness. I think Hinduism tries to like put into words that like those natural systems, like we're going to codify, we're going to call that karma. But it's just, that's what life is, it's just natural. It's kind of neat that it's like, I mean, certainly some people can take it as like, there's a god you have to bow down to. But it's also just like, let's put our heads together and try to figure out what makes sense for life and how, how can we best like be happy. Let's figure that out and take some notes. <laughs> Right, and also at the same I think um, if you have a loving family and loving relatives around, I, that that's what remains, right? And the support for each other should be in acceptance of your beliefs from my point of view. Not just that disparity because you don't believe I don't like you or I don't love you anymore. That's been a common theme, I think, that everybody has mentioned, mm -hmm. that like, recognition of respect for a human being because they're a human being. Exactly. That we are all connected and deserving of love and respect. I have a question for Mr. Brad. Yeah. Um, so I I like heard people talk before like they view Buddhism in different ways like some people like think Buddha is like a prophet sent from God. Some people think Buddha is just like a human they follow his teachings. How do you how do you view Buddha? That's a great question. Some um, yeah, some people think Buddha is an avatar of Vishnu, uh, tying it into the Hindu tradition. Um, so I'll start with what the Buddha thought. The Buddha thought it didn't matter. Um, it was like, yeah, some people will say that I've been sent from Brahma uh, to to deliver my teachings onto the world. Some people will think I'm just a guy. Um, I agree that it, it doesn't really matter if he was 
a profit or not because the the logic that he laid out, just the simple observations of the world, and then observations of what his practices do to your view of the world. He's if you try them out, I mean, for me at least, they they work. Um, so I guess ultimately, I think he's a guy, like um, a real smart guy. A, a real smart guy. Um, I love the stories about Buddha, and the stories about Buddha have you know the influence of the gods and everything, because that's how people understood the world back then. Um, but I could see those just as much being natural influences. It it doesn't matter if there were gods involved or not for me. Um, but yeah, uh, I think he just was so right about how the world works and how we work within the world that um, he can be divine or not, and I'd be happy either way. This is a general question I have. If you have children, how do you explain to them other beliefs you have? What do you mean other beliefs we have? Um, like, for example, you're, you're Buddhist slash Taoist, and Carol over here is Hindu. And if, you, if children were to practice one religion, how do you explain them that you have other beliefs as well? Um, so before Carolyn and I had children, uh, we agreed that they'd be raised Hindu. Um, and I know... Uh, a big part of that was because of the community yeah. that was available, that I had access to a temple and other Hindus, um, so that was something that we wanted for them. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I figure if, if Garrick or Priya get to an age where they want to ask me about my religion, I'll, I'll tell them. But, you know, I agree so much with things Carolyn believes in, uh, <coughs> except for the really minor things. Um, that it, it it's it might as well be my religion. And I think we want to really expose them to as many different belief systems as we can, so that when they are a little bit older, maybe eighteen or something, they'll uh, you know they'll start exploring for themselves and decide. Sometime when they're in the third plane of development. <laughs> <laughs> What they, what they believe and, and make a choice for themselves and a choice that can be changing. You know, we're always getting new information and yeah. you know, growing as people. So I, I love that you mentioned community because I, I feel like for, with, with Judaism, being a part of a community and also being, like, so having a synagogue, having people that I see regularly and also being a part of something that has been around for thousands of years, um, being not not just one individual, but being sort of part of something larger than me has been really important. And um, my husband does not practice in the same way that I do, so we already have to talk about things like, yep, yeah, daddy, daddy's bacon, bacon's not kosher. Um, and and it's it can be it, it can be quite tricky. Um, but um, there, as I'm sure you guys know, there's uh, there's an important time with in. A Jewish young person's life called a bar or a bat mitzvah, and that um, that's when the person becomes a, a Jewish adult and becomes able to make their own sort of r religious decisions. And I've, I've said to my, my children, well, after you have a bar or bat mitzvah, you can you can decide how it, you know how you want to practice Judaism, but there will not be any bacon in this house. <laughs> Well, I haven't any children, um, and I think I'm on a panel who does not have children, but um, the question has um, crossed my mind. And um, with regards to the future, and um, I'm piggybacking on where community is um, very, very um, vital to, um, I have found my experience that the community is vital to continued faith. It's possible on your own, but my experience has been that it's much, much harder. And um, I attend a non-denominational church, um, and the way that we approach like baptism, where there's that decision made to enter the faith, is that um, there are some churches that decide, you know, infant baptism and sprinkle versus dunking, all these other things that are just like <laughs> should. But the, the general question tends to be, um, when are you going to decide to make that question about being a part of the faith or not? 
and how will that be symb um, symbolized with having two? And um, for the church that I attend, um, and I agree uh, with their stance in that, when that decision is made and it is shown in a way that is reflecting act an action, that's showing that this is the way I want to set my life, then that's reflected in, in officially joining that um, church as a member. So that's reflected with baptism and um, other um, rites as well. So um, in that case, I wouldn't be looking for like in a child of mine that official decision of faith that would occur at you know, age 13 or even say age 18 for some cases or what have you to in between. But when it's reflected in that in that lifestyle, um, which is a very easy platitude to be able to say, but that's kind of the easiest way that I sort of go about in that way too. As far as the reality of living in a world where multiple belief systems exist, I believe that we, as we're physically here, we do live in this physical world. So, um, it, part of what I would be looking to be doing is it's actually just the reality of living here. There are <coughs> different people and there are different ways that we believe. And this is what some people believe and this is how others believe. So there's no need to go about, I'm sure, there's no need to go about things as if we're not here, is what I'm basically saying. Um, again, it sounds like lots of high moral platitudes and I give huge, huge, huge respect for all parents who, because parenting is not easy and having to walk this line is not easy either. However, that's at least what I can say as um, somebody who's at least spent some time thinking about this as well. I want to say that Luna is welcome to ask any questions when she sees different forms of religion, family, friends, and if we don't have the answer, we'll, we'll research and give her the truth that we can, as close as we can find it, and if we don't know the answer, research for it. But she will hear from us the most objective answer that we can provide about any religion so she can eventually make her own choices. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, please. Um, so I have a question of how does your religion see God or a higher power or a higher entity for all of you? So for me, I don't believe there is a higher power or a God. I believe that uh, there's really no purpose in, in your life. It's just you're, you're living, and so make the best of it and maximize your life um, while, while you have this one in front of you. Um, and uh, put that in a nutshell. Yeah, I've never had a day. How do you say they that? They do. Yeah, thank you. Or, or is it so I don't see it. Like I don't find it like why to have it. So I don't need to tell you why I don't have it. You tell me why should I have it. And um, for me, it is. Let's see. Well, there's um, reality uh, a relationship where that. That God is one who is in all, through all, and in all. That He is one with whom I have a relationship. It isn't always the best where it should be, but that it, it exists. And that um, He made a way um, to Himself um, through His Son Jesus. And that He is three in one. That there is God the Father, God the Son. God and the Holy Spirit, and I feel like we're getting into all of these more details, what have you, too, so I'm not 100% sure I'm answering your question correctly or as you're intending. Um, however, that's the nature of um, faith and belief, is that um, God is one, He exists in relationship with um, human beings, and He's made that possible and real. So, in Judaism, there's the is interesting Whereas many, many aspects of Christianity, I feel like, have a very codified God. God is this. And in, in Judaism, like, if, if God is this, heaven is this, hell is this, they're like very, very delineated. And um, there, are, there are many acceptable views of God inside Judaism. And, uh, and that's, that's nice. My 
particular belief is pretty atheistic, and that works within Advaita very well. Um, I don't believe that there is a God outside of us, um, somebody that is going to um, uh, judge us or tell us how we should live. Uh, it's more that God is all of us, that our souls are divine, and all put together, they make up what is God. I do find it useful to have certain rituals and um, use the murti, the idols um, displayed on the Hindu altar, as a focal point and a way to kind of um, meditate and come within myself to, to access that divinity within. But um, Hindus generally believe that there's a lot of noise on top of our divinity that's getting in the way and that we misunderstand who we really are, <coughs> that we think I am a woman and I am living in this place and doing this thing, but those are all the details of just this play. And if you take away all of the things that are not essentially me, what is left is God. And in Buddhism, if you take away all of the accoutrements, all of the scene dressing and the ideas of who you are, there is nothing. Like does nothing. <laughs> um, but nothing in God may be the same concept, depending on who you ask. Uh, both in Buddhism and in Taoism, in my own personal belief, uh, there could be spirits, and there could be spirits powerful enough to be called gods. But... Um, they don't matter unless they interact with you. Your own personal path is about the things that you see and hear and feel in the real world or the subtle world. Um, and uh, you're not asked to believe in anything that you do not experience in either of my religions. And that's a big one in Hinduism too. Can you actually experience it? Can you experience the unseen seed? Yes. Okay. Yes. So one, one of the books in Buddhism is called the Abhidharma, uh, and it's, it's just a series of arguments against Hinduism. So a lot, a lot of the things I've said to Carolyn are little jabs from the Abhidharma because it aims to disprove Hinduism. <laughs> as a, but again, Advaita is different because whether or not it comes from Buddhism, it did come later, and so it addresses a lot of the issues that the Abhidharma put forward. Um, I have a question for like the whole board. What like religious holidays do you celebrate, like if any? Like, do you celebrate? I I celebrate a hodgepodge. I think my favorite holiday is my birthday, um, but I. <laughs> uh, we celebrate some cultural holidays, like we, we went to my dad's house and celebrate Christmas, even though we're not Christian. It was a real low key. Yeah. I like to do a little ritual uh, on solstices and equinoxes. Um, and uh, my son's birthday is also the Buddha's birthday, so it's kind of like a dual celebration. Um. Hinduism has a ton of holidays and festivals, and Hindus love to celebrate. And so they will celebrate their own and other people's, usually pretty happily, <laughs> uh, any excuse to celebrate. So the big season of holidays wraps up around November with Diwali. Um, and there's a number of holidays leading up to that. So there's Krishna's birthday, there's uh, Ganesha celebration, where Ganesha is returned to the river. Uh, and my favorite is Navratri, which is a nine-day celebration of all the goddesses. And um, you set up a display, and you have, um, in South India, they do something called a golu, which I'm really fond of, where they set up um, kind of like a Christmas village. You have little scenes, and there's a series of steps, and you put um, dolls on them according to the amount of consciousness. So you put the gods at the top, and then you have the human beings, and then you have the animals, and at the bottom you have like a scene. So I like to do that every year. 
um, ideally your friends come and visit and give them little gifts and show off your, your scene. Um, my family celebrates all the, all the Jewish holidays, and um, so the, some of the really important ones are in the fall, um, the school closes for the first day of Rosh Hashanah. I also uh, observe the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur comes 10 days after the start of Rosh Hashanah. In between, it's the 10 days of repentance. Um, I love the holiday of Sukkot, which comes really close on the heels of Yom Kippur. Um, it's a harvest holiday, and Simchat Torah, which is a celebration of the giving of the Torah, happens right after that. But um, it can be really hard living in a country where you're the minority, a minority religion, um, tr trying to, like, if you can, if you can imagine um, Christmas and New Year's and all the celebration that happens in between Christmas and New Year's, if you have to go to your school and say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be there on December 25th. It's a really important holiday for my culture, and um, I'm sorry, and I'm also going to be absent the 26th because it's Boxing Day, and that's really, um, that, that's, it's important. And then, uh, and hoping that they'll give you the time off, or that you won't miss too much. So, um, when I was yeah. being around in the culture where you're like, I want to be in a celebratory mood, but nobody else yes. is. <laughs> like I, I felt really bad about Sukkot Torah this year. It's a really, really fun holiday. You go to services and you march around the Torahs and you dance with them and people eat a lot and they drink a lot and everything is really fun. Um, and I was sick that day. Um, so as far as my kids knew this year, that holiday didn't exist. It was like... Like if, like if that, so. You don't do it. If, if, exactly, exactly. If I didn't make it to synagogue. Um, Passover is another big one uh, that I might get made towards Passover. Um, but interestingly enough, my, my husband's family celebrates Christmas, and we always go there and help them celebrate. I just personally celebrated um, the Christian holidays in particular. Um, I think, um, probably in general, that. I take probably Easter um, more seriously in general than in, in the culture in that um, there's a lot of preparation that's done for it too. There's a um, Holy Week ahead of time and um, Good Friday um, as well too. Can you so Lent? Um, Lent is optional um, um, because um, my church is, in, is uh, non denominational, but more of a Protestant meaning. Mm -hmm. So um, I've practiced Lent um, several times. Um, but. Lent as preparation for Easter as well, 40 days of fasting ahead of Easter. Um, um, but yes, I think that's Christmas as well, um, it's in the mix as well too. But um, I think just in general, just my practice has been, um, even though there, there are celebrations as well too that's tied in, but um, and not just subdued just for sake of emotion, but just getting more to um, where um, these holidays or holy days come from. Um, I celebrate life, and if you have food, people, and joy, and music, I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> so, so we go, if there's, um, and it's also a history lesson for all of us. So if there's a procession for Holy Week, where people carry the saints and tell the story of the steps that Christ had to follow, during that week, and then you explain that, that happened, right? For the reasons that happened, that's history. Same thing with two days, and when you go to Passover, you also understand things that happened at certain in humanity. So, why not? And if you're learning, growing, and having fun, I'm in. So I celebrate whatever. Yes, so. <laughs> We celebrate um, the Jewish holidays with my parents and my family, and um, we celebrate Christmas and Easter with our friends. So it's it's more just celebrating the traditions. Um, a lot of songs that I grew up with, you know, I know and I it's fun to, to sing. And, um, so yeah, it's it's really just all about fun and um, as much as I would say respecting um, our family, it's just more to have fun with them because. Kind of tradition. Mm -hmm. I have a general question. Um, do any of you believe in an afterlife? I'm willing to consider, but 
I'm not going to sign my name to anything. <laughs> I believe in reincarnation. So the soul um, has multiple opportunities to keep on growing until it's able to come to the realization that of what it truly is. So um, it, it seems unreasonable to me that if that is the goal, which is up for debate, but if that is the goal, then we wouldn't have you know 60 years, 70 years, um, and that's it to figure that out. So you get as many chances as you need to get to that point. And once you do fully comprehend that you are divine, then um, you do not need to reincarnate anymore. You just merge with the consciousness of the universe. I also believe in, in reincarnation, but uh, I don't think you need a soul to reincarnate. Uh, I think your karma can uh, is all you need for that. How is it still you? It's not, because there is no you. Okay, so you are only the karma so that was from the place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, a new being appears out of nothing. Out of your karma. Karma <laughs> um, versus soul. Discuss. <laughs> We but, did a video series for my yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> um, I did. I did want to say I forgot one holiday that I actually celebrate, which is uh, Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year, um, and uh, we uh, we celebrate that with uh, my kung fu family. Uh, we go out and there's a big uh, a big dinner for everyone to be together and celebrate the New Year. I don't believe in reincarnation, but I feel I find more like the explanation of we are energy and energy is not created or destroyed, it transforms. So your energy gets in different like expand like transforms into something when you die. I won't call it a spirit or a bug or anything like but it transforms into something. More not like a more scientific explanation for the energy. Yeah I, I don't um believe in an afterlife, I believe. This is the one life um, that we have. Yeah. And um, to just rehash something that I said earlier that might not have been as clear, when I say I use reason and logic, what I'm really saying is um, I believe that there is a truth um, to everything. Um, we live in reality, and it's just really hard to, to find the truth. And to me, religion, the big game changer for me was when somebody kind of said to me, religion made sense um, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago when we just didn't have as many answers. But um, as we evolve and science proves that the world's round and it's not flat, you know, when somebody was able to build a boat that could um, you know, circumnavigate the globe, you, know, you had your proof. And um, constantly science just keeps uncovering more and more truths, whether it's how to you know, treat heart attacks or, or, or whatever it might be. So, um, but that's, that's I mean. the big question of whether yeah. religion and science are at odds with each other. It right. certainly right. depends on how you're practicing your religion because they certainly can be. But they don't have to be. They don't have to be. But they, um, yeah. Heard... Some religions are like aiming to right. find those truths and are excited and happy to find new scientific discoveries. <laughs> Sure, and but unfortunately, that's rare. I heard somebody say um, that science would love to prove that there's a God. It would be you know, the most incredible um, truth ever proven. Um, so, you know, if somebody shows the evidence, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, so. but as for me, not to take it too lightly, but I do believe in a good place and a bad place. Um, but not in the way as portrayed on TV. I never see a good place portrayed on TV. What's that? Nothing. Oh, 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 oh my, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. That, that was a spoiler. Anyhow, um, anyhow um, I do think though, um, because you know, especially just living in this country that we have, that that sort of belief is um, can be um, thrown out pretty flippantly, and that either way, whether. Um, and I'm saying it's happened this panel, just in the terms of for other Christians as well. Um, that it is something very serious to um, I do believe part of my pausing here too. Um, there is this uh, this um, re idea beginning with the end in mind about an approach to lifestyle. And 
um, I do take that into account with that belief. Not that it's easy, or not that it's, um, you know, that's just the one particular I'm going to that's easy. However, um, in the reality of living a life according to um, truth, um, it is something that um, I do believe. Listen, we probably have time for one or two more questions before closing remarks. Oh. This is another this is another question that goes to all of the panelers. Um, does religion believe in equality? Does our religion? Huh? Does what? our religion believe in equality? Um, what could you further define equality? Like equality between the sexes, equality between mm -hmm. are, are all members of your religions treated equally, like women or people of different races? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll start because that's actually been a well, like a, a, a friction point. Um, and I'll briefly tell you the story about the Western Wall in Jerusalem, which is like the most holy place in Judaism. Um, I was. I was part of a group that had um, milk and other things thrown at us because we were worshiping in a way where the women women were reading the Torah, and um, and and the people who were doing that were other Jews. So um, many many it, there's different there's different Jewish uh, beliefs and faiths and. and when you said the word tradition, I was like, tradition! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other roof came right out. It's, um, there is not one answer for Judaism. I, I, I practice an egalitarian faith. Egalitarian? E egalitarian, meaning that men and women are equal, meaning that um, once a person is b'nai mitzvah, they've, they've, they've become old enough to become a Jewish adult, they're equal, that rabbis are especially learned people. They're not people who have a direct line to God. Um, and so the version I practice is very interested in, in, equal, in equality. This is definitely something that Hinduism comes up against because of caste. Um, in reality, uh, or I guess I should say ideally, Hindus believe that we are all equally God, and so you would treat any human being as you would God, and become their spouse, that you welcome them as though they are God. Um, but there have been some issues with practice because human beings um, have a lot of ignorance and a lot of things that kind of get in the way of them seeing the truth in somebody else. Um, I think in terms of male and female equality, that was better um, thousands of years ago. Hinduism has both gods and goddesses that are very well balanced, and India was taken over by uh, the English when they had they were practicing Christianity in a really rigid way, um, and they introduced a whole lot of <coughs> women's roles versus men's roles that are still there today. Um, caste is something that has been around for a long time in Hinduism. Um, I have spoken to a lot of Indian Hindus about it since I don't come from that background. And what I've been mostly told is that it is, the way it's practiced now has been a misunderstanding and a misinterpretation of how it was intended. Um, that it was really just a, supposed to be a way to help um, guide people in society towards like, how we can all help each other, I guess, but it is certainly unacceptable to me uh, how it has been practiced in the last few hundred years, and uh, I think it is falling out of practice now. There's still a long way to go, but people are coming around to the idea that caste does not have to be an essential part of Hinduism and it can be removed. Um, in the type of Buddhism that I have learned the most from and uh, that my practice derives from, which is Theravada Buddhism. Uh, the idea is that only people who become bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, monks and nuns, uh, are the ones who are truly practicing. 
uh, it is not a lay religion. It's not for everyone. It's really almost entirely for monks and nuns. And Buddha did accept both men and women and monks and then nuns, people who speak Buddhist, um, into the fold in another branch of Buddhism called Mahayana, which means the greater vehicle, which is equivalent to Protestantism in that a bunch of different types of Buddhism are all bunched together under uh, Mahayana. There are lots of different beliefs. There is a uh, bodhisattva, an enlightened being, uh, who is a woman, her name is Kuan Yin, uh, but some branches of Mahayana believe that no, she's not actually a woman, she was a woman and then she died, reincarnated as a man, and that's when she became enlightened because women can't be enlightened. That's not a belief that I have, but another branch of Buddhism believes that. Um, in Taoism, there's an acknowledgement that there is yin, which is uh, passive, cold, feminine energy, and yang, which is active, hot, masculine energy, um, exists in the universe as two forces, um, and those forces are uh, fundamental to the moving of the entirety of the world, so both are necessary. Actually, I do talk about a guy who went off the deep end about uh, feminine energy. Yeah. There can't possibly be any such thing as dividing energy into masculine and feminine. Well, me and the Hermetics, we do it. <laughs> I'll mention from a Christian history in that way that, um, as Brad alluded to in Protestantism, there are things you can find, uh, lots of things out there. So I'll just mention, um, I guess, closer to, like, um, for, like, uh, my church, like, my beliefs, um, is that um, we do have um, um, equality in the leadership. Um, we do have um, leadership that is under pastoralship, under for um, women and for men. Um, a lot of the um, beliefs of, for what we're, we're coming from, for a lot of Christian traditions, is coming from um, beliefs in the Bible because understood as the um, word that comes from God. So um, uh, some of the other applications that you'll see out there may come from a particular understanding of certain passages. Um, one that comes to my head is um, there's an understanding from the book of 1 Corinthians where um, Paul is addressing a particular group of um, Christian, early Christian believers and about a practice of wearing a headdress. And the idea, at least from our interpretation, is that that was something that was intended for a certain culture at a certain time, but that it's not something that was meant to carry forward. And you'll find certain Christian beliefs that believes that you'll see, like for women wearing headdresses, that it's stemming from that particular verse. Um, so that's where you can see a lot of ideas come into play. There's um, biblical metaphors for God that are both masculine and feminine. Um, including um, even like for with animals, this idea that God covers his people with his wings as well too. So for um, my church, um, our belief is that um, yes, there are the um, the pronouns used for God that are traditionally masculine. We do keep with that tradition, but in terms of understanding of who God is and His love, it isn't strictly just like a masculine love because it was um, laid out right there in the scriptures in that way too. So. Um, in, in that sort of belief, you, a church could be labeled sort of progressive in that way um, versus traditional in, those, in, in that way. Um, it is a, that is a huge question. <laughs> but I think um, as um, we see in the media and the news as well too, is that there are um, many Christian denominations or have you too that are coming to different understandings in that regard, others that are not. And as for me personally, I'm more of the others who are um, continuing to, uh, to involve in that understanding. I'm very grateful to be able to attend a church where um, I don't have feel friction in that way. There's an understanding that male and female are different. However, our differences do not make us un unequal. Um, and that we can respect what those differences may be, but that that's not just the end of the story. So basically what I'm getting to in that way. So that, that's my attempt to answer a very big question <laughs> in a timely fashion. Um, it doesn't apply to me. We are all equals. We are humans. Um, we are different as different and we can all be.
Yeah, um, I like to, I believe that most humans are, are good natured and I look at children, very, very young children, and I look at the way they interact with each other and they're, they're free of all these biases and no matter how much money their parents have or what color they are or male, female, they, they all just kind of interact with each other and play. Um, you know, that's kind of the basis that I, that I come from. Um, and I don't have any sort of um, rules um, you know, from, from an organized religion now that, um, that don't allow me to be objective like that. I have one, sorry, quick question. Uh, it's, uh, do any of you believe in like the story of Adam and Eve or evolution? I mean, or, um, yeah, basically. Like That's Adam a quick question. <laughs> I don't believe in Adam and Eve. There are three different creation stories in the, um, the five books of Moses, which are the Torah and Judaism and the Old Testament and Christianity. And I don't know what their name is in the Quran, but they are part of the Quran Bible. There is Adam and Eve, and then there is, the, and God created the world, male and female, he created them. And then I think there's there's one more. I can't can't pull it, pull it off. Um, and. As my mother says, if all three of them are true, according to the religion, then the Big Bang is also a, 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 a true story. Um, so no, I believe in, in that, it, I, I believe that that is the tradition of my people. I don't believe it as literal fact. Um, it could be a metaphor for sure, there's lots yeah. of metaphor. So there's, there's an author who really likes to interpret myths of different cultures. His name is Joseph Campbell. Um, and if you've ever heard of Star Wars, a lot of what makes Star Wars wonderful is the fact that <coughs> he was, uh, George Lucas studied Joseph Campbell uh, and consulted with him. But he has a lovely uh, essay about what the metaphor of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden is. And I think it's lovely, but uh, it, it's not lovely. Yeah, I heard, I heard, some, I read somewhere that the Forbidden fruit is supposed to represent premarital sex. Uh, that is not specific. Joseph Campbell's interpretation. It represents knowledge in his interpretation. Um, and you know, I study a lot of religions, so uh, there's actually a whole branch, a really tiny branch, but a whole branch of Christianity uh, called the Gnostics, who actually interpret the serpent as God. But yeah, we can talk about that later. As for me, I um, see. For me, it's not a question of um, strict interpretation about Adam and Eve in the creation story. About it being seven days, it could have been seven thousand years, what have you. Too. The most important part to me that comes out of um, that story um, from Genesis is the is the reality of a directed creation, and that the Creator can be known, and that there can be a relationship with Him. So, um, with regards to evolution, I do believe that change is reality and can be observed. So, I don't have, and we were alluding to earlier about the, um, the idea that there doesn't have to be friction between religion and science. I don't, don't believe that understanding of um, evolution precludes um, religious belief. Um, so, to me, it's like a non-starter that one would have to be against the other. Um, yeah. And um, I was recently looking at this uh, tradition of the avatars of Vishnu. There's a belief that one of the three main Hindu gods comes to Earth on a regular basis um, as an already enlightened being, I guess, to uh, help in some way. And there's ten traditional forms that are talked about. And um, it was pointed out to me that they follow the evolutionary track. The first form is a fish through different various animals into human beings. Yeah, I definitely believe that we evolved from animals. Strong, strong believer in evolution.
Lucia has prepared some closing remarks before she delivers those. I am wondering what would you, each of you, or collectively like to impart to our community as we're beginning a study to expand and develop our religious literacy? Religion to me is just so interesting, and so I would just I want everyone to have an open mind um, and just take in as many different ideas as you can, because even if you don't end up believing that they're true, learning about them deepens your own beliefs. So I just as much as you can. Yeah, and the same thing within religions too, when you'll have different teachers and different authors interpreting things different ways, you know, learn as many of them as you can and, and uh, fill your brain with as much knowledge as you can so that you'll sort of parse out what you think makes the most sense within life. There's so many interesting religions and practices out there. I hope you discover some really, really wonderful ones. And also, it's interesting to see how things change throughout the, how things are different throughout the world. Like, we, we're, we're here where you, everybody knows what Christmas is. Are there places that people haven't heard of it? This is a little bit dangerous, I'll go there. So, um, one of the advantages you guys have is breath. You get to find out so, so much. You can find out, like, again, I just, I even think about it, I'm just like, I can't speak. Yes, there is a lot of breath out there. Be honest in your pursuit of that breath. It's not scary. There are some weird things out there, yeah. You probably heard some weird things from us already. <laughs> but go after it. Get that breath. Find out about all of these things. And should there be something, you might already be coming from a background already or you don't have your ideas. So be on. then with that breath, should there be a path that you choose that you're following it, pursue it with that honest depth thing. Don't just, and this is the dangerous part, don't just half step it. If this is the way that you're supposed to go along, then be real about it. That's the way that you're supposed to go along. Go honestly along that way. Don't just half step and be like, eh, this is kind of my thing, my thing. No, if this is who you are and this is what you believe and this is how you have um, reached on this path, then go for it. But don't just half step it. That's my thing. Don't just half step it. Say, this is kind of thing I'm happy to. We've talked about huge things here. You guys are thinking about huge things yourselves, even the fact that this is happening, which is awesome. But um, that would be my little bit. It's like, Find out about so much, get that breath, but when you go for that depth, go for it. Well, really yeah. go for it. Yeah. yeah, well, so, yeah, research, research, research. Inform yourself, ask as many questions as you can to yourself, parents, relatives, friends, whomever. And just figure what you really want to believe in or not to believe in. But always, like, question in. Once you decide to go for something, respect others please because no matter what people are going to think different than you if it's not in religion it's in something else so always consider that people may have a different point of view that you do so the more you investigate and I learned that from today also like I don't have any background like, I've never done any research I just that's what I what I am so Guide your principles, guide your life, your values, but what you decide to believe in, respect your others. Always. I get back to uh, Annika. Annika or? Uh, Annika. Annika's question, which is just so relevant to all of you, which was her question to me was how did your parents take it? And how did you deal with that? And um, especially at your ages, um, you're not in college now, right? You're still living with your family. And um, that's hard. It's hard to um, be courageous um, in the face of what your parents believe or, um, you know, what they impart on you. Um, but if, you know, just my advice to you is um, eventually you, you are going to kind of spread your wings and fly away and um, be courageous. Um, it's, it's 
It's your one life that you have to be as happy as you can be. And um, if your viewpoints end up do differing, um, like Marcel said, be respectful. Something I've learned again. Um, my parents and hopefully your parents um, are just sharing whatever they can so you'll be as happy as, and they do it out of love, right? So, um, you know, when you kind of for, formulate your beliefs, um, just be respectful that this is the path that they might have chosen, and again, it's different. And, uh, but, uh, and you can all kind of coexist and be happy together and celebrate those traditions, even if it's not something you believe in. Oh, one more thing. Respect and trust yourself. Be honest because, and see yourself. Yeah, you really inspired me when you were saying that. It made me think of you're going to encounter people who are authority figures in religions who are going to say to you, you have to believe this. You must do this. And it's so important that you check in with yourself and say, does this feel authentic? Does this feel true? Does this feel right? Does this feel moral? Or does it feel harmful? And if they're trying to tell you, you know, oh, if you feel icky about this, it's because you are sinful or you have a problem. You need to be able to disregard that. You need to be really strong in turning to yourself and trusting that deep down you know what is right and whether what they're telling you is accurate. Not every religion believes that. <laughs> no. But, you know, like, um, that happens in Christianity, but it also happens in Hinduism. Um, it kind of, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but you know, gurus. Well, the come top up a down. Lot. I was just thinking that not one of us have a very hierarchical practice. Yeah. Yes. Like, not and I used to because I grew up in a cult. And mm -hmm. so when I left that, it was like, never again am or, I going to turn over or my Or Catholicism yes. is where the Pope will say. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's infallible. Yeah. yeah. But um, you can easily kind of fall into these. False God men they call it. They will say, I speak for God, and so you have to believe me. You don't know. I know because I'm connected to God, and you need to know that you are connected to God too. Um, one, one thing, I'm sorry, I have to end things. Uh, just, uh, I get inspired. inspired. Yeah. Uh, one interesting thing to think about um, is that, you know, on this panel, uh, you, you have deists, you have non-deists, you have atheists. Um, what makes a religion a religion? What, if, it's, if a belief set is not a religion, then what is it? Um, and that's, that's an interesting avenue to, to go down to, because I've, I've definitely heard Hinduism referred to as a way of life, not a religion. Buddhism referred to as a philosophy and not a religion, but yeah, it's it's a question. Or Judaism, a culture. And yeah, or religion. Not, yeah, yeah. So it's it's an open question. I don't think we get firm answers, but I think it's worth thinking about.